Um, I uh, uh, looked at um, a, the project that I'm talking about is a visioning process that we did. Uh, but before I like, delve into that, I guess there's a, just a couple of thank yous, uh, mahalos, mahalos, that I have to um, shout out to. Is first to Drew, <laughs> the Center for the Study of Women, um, and uh, for hosting this and putting this on annually. And, and uh, I, I can't imagine, I, and I don't want to imagine, like, what it takes with, like, the, with, like coordinating all the papers and all that. So I thank you, Drew, for that. I really appreciate it. Um, also to um, the UCLA Leskin School of Public Affairs and the Department of Urban Planning for their support this past year and a half. Um, and then I also have to give a shout out to where I did the master's in urban and regional planning, which is at the University of Hawaii at the NOAA. Um, so I, um, as um, you mentioned, I'm from, I hail from the Ko'olawa North Shore of Oahu. That's where I was born. That's where uh, my stopping grounds are. Um, and uh, actually, uh, my, advi my advisor was, uh, or now is also Karen Mimoto, who's the director of the Asian American Studies Center. So she was my advisor for the master's. Um, and then uh, I also want to thank the Group Medical Center and the Phase One Community Visioning Team that I was a part of um, in this project that I did um, in 2015. Um, and then just my mentors and my family, my Ohana, so thank you for that. Um, so, okay, so I was trying to like think like, uh, okay, so why, why, health act, why does health access matter? Um, and I, I, to, just st take a step back and um, uh, what Mihala talked about with um, the migrant students in Turkey and their access to health of healthcare. Um, why should it matter for us here in this room? And why does it matter to me? And I was thinking about some of the um, just the current time that we are, we are in in regards to the Affordable Care Act and what access that people have or don't have and what groups. Um, are because of that marginalized, which is what we you know I talked about is, with certain groups. And um, I was I was also thinking um, in terms of some of the reports that Epic has come out with empowering Pacific Islander communities. And um, the one of the main focus has always been on health um, access for um, uh, Southern California residents um, that hail from. Um, the Pacific, uh, Pacific Island nations and um, that migrate here. And there's quite an influx that come from the South Pacific over to Hawaii and then um, settle into California, both in Northern and Cal. And there's a pretty big population, uh, decent sized minority population in Carson and Long Beach and all across um, the Southern um, California cities and towns that I'm still. Um, acclimating and getting used to. I've only been here in, in LA, East LA for about a year and a half, June 2016. Um, let's see, and then uh, just in regards to the, the framework, um, so I, um, I, I've been struggling with like, okay, so how do I frame um, what I, how, how, how do I distill what I'm looking at in regards to health aspects? access for um, Pacific Islanders, um, totally Americans like myself that are part of the diaspora and those in Southern California and across the country here in the US. And the lens that I'm looking at as a community planner um, comes from this idea that Linda Tuivai Smith talks about like, decolonizing methodologies and there's like she talks about um, ensuring that we center the, the those the indigenous who have whoever it is, um, um, at, this, at the forefront of the discussion, whether it be health, whether it be education, uh, whether it be housing. Um, and then also, I didn't put her name up there, but um, Manulani, Manulani, um, Manulani Aludi Meyer talks about um, what indigenous means. And indigenous is just which is that which has endured, that which has thrived. So um, in some form of fashion, we're all indigenous. All indigenous. So um, she talks about how uh, she used to use, um, when she talked about knowledge production, she used to talk about um, Hawaiian epistemology and people were like, uh, felt excluded from that. And then she would talk about 
um, indigenous epistemology, and she said uh, people still feel like felt excluded. And then finally, she like uses the ter term holistic ep epistemology, where um, really what we know and how we know what we know is holographic. It's um, an illusion. <laughs> it's an algorithm. Um, so uh, then I also draw on some of the um, some of the lens and frames that Karen has used, and Leo Sandikoff, another planner um, from uh, University of British Columbia, in regards to um, the multicultural multiplicity that there's multiple truths, and how we arrive at um, planning for cities and planning for communities. Um, Wendy Sarkeesian also talk, uses the speak out model that um, that we used in our vision process and trying to. Um, trying to work from the ground up and enlisting community members to tell us what they what they thought health meant, health and wellness meant to them. Um, and John Friedman, who also hails from UCLA and um, also was a planner at um, UBC, University of British Columbia, talks about theories in and out of planning. Um, so it's a work in progress. Um, as a planner, like one of the things I like to talk about is that <laughs> You need like some sort of like model or diagram, and then like you've made it like to <laughs> in regards to the, the framework. Um, so just to preface the the community revisioning process that happened um, in the North Shore of Oahu, um, and the you have Oahu, and uh, the the place that I'm talking about is, a, is within a rural island setting, so sort of what Neil has talked about with informal clinics. There's a lot of informal health and wellness that occurs in the North Shore of the side of Oahu. Um, and to, from, from a broader context, um, in rural areas, because I'm talking about the rural urban divide, there's only about 10% of physicians that practice in rural America. That's nearly a fourth of the population. Only about a third of all um, traffic accidents occur in rural areas, two thirds of the death of them. In regards to, there's like 60 dentists per 100,000 people in urban areas, whereas in rural areas, you only have like 40 dentists. Um, and then another uh, from Healthy Hawaii, they also talk about, um, it's so dire. Like the way, they talk, the, the way it's framed in regards to NHPIs and diabetes and um, obesity and um, heart disease. So uh, the, it's, a, it's a pretty, it becomes like sort of dire that so much so that I'm like, let's talk about what we do do well with. But um, let's go to the next slide here. So this is the this is part of the medical service area that I looked that I had looked at with this team with the community visioning process and what we, the research questions that we were asking was, you know, what does health and wellness mean to you and look like? And so. Um, Honolulu is on the east co on the east side, so this is the north side that I'm looking at, um, and it's part of the city and county of Honolulu. Um, so I apologize for how I was condensed this historical, but how small it is. Um, essentially, uh, what this what the, t the with with this hospital because it's. It's connected. It used to be a fully functioning state hospital, and then, like most state hospitals, because of the way um, health, well, because of outs, probably outs, um, external and also internal forces, like um, their funding got cut with Kuku Hospital. Um, they had filed for bankruptcy in February 2007. Um, they were on the brink of closing, and then in March 2008, they became became a medical center, officially they be, officially became an affiliate of Hawaii Health System Corporation um, in uh, 2012. Again, the medical center was close to its Chapter 11 bankruptcy. And so uh, there was a lot of uh, ebbs and flows with the hospital in this rural um, area, and um, it being state-run, uh, a state-run hospital, and. Um, it having a lot of um, issues in regards to to funding, and you have to think about the it being in a rural area, and then where most what ends up happening is rural residents end up going traveling to to town, traveling to Honolulu to access resources. Um, let's see. 
And then, so what we had did, done with this visioning process is we looked at, we held several visioning meetings and several town hall meetings. And we uh, interviewed and spoke with the staff at the medical center. Um, we also held a town hall meeting. Uh, and then we also talked with the um, physicians and the clinicians in the medical center. And um, it's a campus that includes um, a juvenile rehab center, a CHC, a community health center. So there's several niches and venues that we have looked at in regards to the, the, the campus, the uh, medical center. And then we also talked to the neighboring high school health academy. Um, and then what I got overall from the themes in, in regards to this visioning process and what folks in this rural area were looking at as far as health and wellness is First, that they want, they simply did not know what the hospital, what the medical center was offering. So, just improving communication, improving outreach um, to your residents. So, uh, the medical center offers like dialysis services, and a majority of the residents at the town hall meetings were like, "Well, we didn't know that. <laughs> like, we did. We were traveling like an hour away to go get um, some." to get dialysis and so just the outward reach that the medical center could do in regards to um, in ensuring that uh, residents knew what was offered. And then also improving co collaboration among the stakeholders, that including the neighboring high school, making sure that the high school academy was aware of what the medical center was doing, also making sure that um, Bobby Benson Center, the juvenile rehab center. Um, so just again, um, making sure were they're inundated with just the day to day and making sure that there was collaboration occurring and because um, what happens when you don't collaborate is there's either a duplicity in services or you know there's just a lot of wasted time and resources um, that otherwise would um, would be better aligned and um, if there was collaboration occurring and then just developing I apologize for the prevention um, developing prevention and wellness systems, um, and looking at health and wellness holistically, medicine and Western thought of um, the way we arrive at health and wellness is like cut up into squares and like, <laughs> you know, like uh, separated and compartmentalized and um, the, the way that uh, indigenous scholars have looked at health and wellness is with like holistically, that it's, it's it's a circle, it's not boxes. So I'm still wrapping my head around what that means for me as a planner, looking at indigenous ways, the non-Western approaches to planning and to health and wellness. Um, so some of the things that I had thought of, uh, that I, I'm again grappling with is Manuel Meyer talking about holistic health and I'm talking about the trilogy, talking about the body, mind, and spirit being one. Um, and I, I appreciate that also Luciano Minervi, another um, planner over at UH Manoa, talks about this. Um, I appreciate this idea of like holistic health and well, uh, wellness and talking about the body, mind, and spirit, um, uh, especially in spaces like um, the academy where like, oh, what are you talking about, Sarah? The spirit? What spirit are you calling on? You know, so it's just... <laughs> Like, like the idea that Auntie uh, uh, Manuela Meyer, you know, she's come, she hails from Harvard, taught at, um, in New Zealand, and now is like, like she's a Hawaiian that's like was called to come to the University of Hawaii to indigenize even the University of Hawaii system. That means indigenizing. So just. Um, thinking about what, what that looks like in regards to holistic health. And then I also, because um, Manuel Meyer was looking at um, talking about holistic epistemology, um, I'm grappling with how um, social media and how our technology for like our health technologies differ now because there are social media platforms that medical centers that like um, KMC, Kilgore Medical Center uses um, Facebook and Instagram, and what that means in regards to virtual public spaces of health and wellness, and if 
if it's actually uh, a good, like if it actually does, um, I like I have to put away my phone. Like the only reason why I have this computer up is because I have to print the, <laughs> the my paper. But it's like it. How does again? I'm grappling with that. How does like tech me medical technologies uh, in virtual public spaces? How is that? being informed by how we think about health and wellness, how we think about holistic health. Um, and so that's, again, going back, this is sort of what I'm looking at in regards to encouraging non-Western approaches to planning. And I think that's, yeah, I think that's it. Thank you.